Howdy folks. I'm going to bend your brains here. Here's what we're going to do today. We are going to talk about, we're continuing, we're continuing with rational functions, but what I want to do is I want to go all the way back to linear functions, something you would have learned maybe in eighth or ninth grade uh, that you probably also learned maybe in a college algebra class or something like that. And I want to understand the, uh, when you learned about slope, right? And we're going to understand slope as a rational function, okay? Here's what I mean. Do you recall, uh, let's say you're given some, some linear function, like f of x is equal to 4x minus 7, right? Here's a linear function. It's x to the first power. There's a 4 in front of the x, and therefore the slope of this linear function is 4, because we know that the linear function, a linear function is, uh, is it from the form y equals mx plus b, where b is the y-intercept and where m is the slope. So in this linear function here, we know that the y-intercept is negative 7. So like we could graph this, negative 1, negative 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, negative 7 having a slope of 4, because m is 4, right? So we go up 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, over 1, up 4, over 1, up 4, over 1, and then we could draw a line straight through all these points, and we would have the graph of the linear function f of x is equal to 4x minus 7, or y equals 4x minus 7, right? But here's what I want to, to you know, so you're, this is obviously not a rational function. But if we go and think about what m is equal to, didn't you learn that m is equal to rise over run? That's one way you learned it. You also learned that m is equal to delta y over delta x, or change in y over change in x. But to calculate the slope, you were probably taught that slope is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And this, you can understand this as the slope if you were given two points. For example, on this line, we have the point 2, 1, and we also have the point 3, 5. Okay, 3, 5. So if we had the point 2, 1, and 3, 5, and if we were told, hey, there's this line that runs through the points 2, 1, and 3, 5. What is the equation of that line? You probably would use the formula m is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 to find the slope. And then you would choose one of these two points as the 2, as the, as the y2, x2 and y2, and you would choose one of these points as the y1, x1. And your teacher probably taught you that the larger x value is the x2 and the smaller x value is the x1, but the truth is that it doesn't really matter which one is x2 and which one is x1. It doesn't matter at all, as long as you have your y1 and your x1 together and your y2 and your x2 together. But for the sake of argument, let's go ahead and call this one x2, which makes the, this y2, and let's call this x1, which makes this y1, right? All right, so now we can calculate the slope. We can say that m is equal to uh, y2, 5, minus y1, 1, over x2, 3, minus x1, 2. And 5 minus 1 is 4, and 3 minus 2 is 1, and 4 over 1 is 4. And so we just proved something that we already know, that the slope of this line is 4, okay? But here's what I want you to, to, here's what I want you to focus on. Notice that, that slope, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, this is a rational expression.
And because it's, and the reason I know it's a rational expression is because it's a fraction. Haven't we already said that rational expressions are fractions? Fractions that have an x in the denominator. And so look at this. This slope, this m, has an x. In fact, it has two x's in the denominator. So slope, in this particular case, actually is a rational function. So the slope is a function of whatever the y values and the x values are. It's actually a kind of a complicated function. But what we're going to do is we're going to simplify it a little bit. Okay. What we're going to do is instead of plugging in for y2 and y1 and x2 and x1. So, see, when we plug in for all four points, when we plug in for all four, or excuse me, not all four, for all four numbers, when we plug in for both points, for both coordinates, it's no longer a function. It becomes a value that we can calculate, and it's a finite value. But what if, what if we only plugged in for one point? What if we ignored 2 and 1, and all we had was the point 3, 5, and we plugged in 5 for y1 and 3 for x1. Then what we would have is m is equal to, instead of y2, we'll just say y. y minus 5 over x minus 3. And now, again, we have a function, a rational function. Slope is a rational function. Okay? Now, the problem here is that we have one, two, three variables instead of just two variables. We're accustomed to dealing with only two variables. In fact, if you have three variables and you don't have another equation to go along with it, then you can't solve it or you can't do anything very useful with it. Um, I mean, we can't solve equations uh, technically, but we, we would have even a difficult time graphing this. Okay? But here's the interesting thing. If we go back, if we do have the line equation, f of x is equal to 4x minus 7, well, don't we know, isn't f of x the same thing as y? Isn't y equal to f of x? So can't we take the y out, and instead of putting a y there, can't we put f of x in there? So now our slope becomes m equals f of x minus 5 over x minus 3. Now, slope is strictly a function of x values because we know that f of x is a function of x. So we could replace f of x with whatever it is equal to, with the function of x that it is equal to. But slope is still a rational function. It's now f of x minus 5 over x minus 3. So we only have one more step to be able to make something useful out of this slope function. So now we can say that slope is equal to, well, what is f of x equal to? f of x is equal to 4x minus 7. So now we can even take the f of x out and put in 4x minus 7. So I'm going to put in 4x minus 7 for f of x minus 5 minus 5 all over x minus 3. And if we simplify it a little bit, we get 4x. And now we have negative 7 minus 5. Negative 7 minus 5 is negative 12 all over x minus 3. And now we could go further. We could simplify this and cancel some stuff. But we're going to leave it as this because we actually don't want it to go away. We want to leave it in this form because it now becomes useful in this form in a way that you don't understand, but that's okay. Here's what I want to show you though, is that the slope, the slope of the function is now a function of x alone. So now we have m of x is equal to 4x minus 12 over x minus 3. And now, if you actually go back and watch one of my videos from day one the other day, you'll see that this is actually the same thing as one of those functions. 
And what you will find is that in this case, no matter what you plug in for x, the answer will always be 4. Let me show you what I mean. We had the point 2, 1 up here, right? So x was 2. So if we put a 2 in for x, this is what we'll have. Let me come over here. We'll have m equals 4 times 2 minus 12 all over 2 minus 3. Well, 4 times 2, that's 8. 8 minus 12 is negative 4. 2 minus 3 is negative 1. And negative 4 divided by negative 1 is 4. And so the slope is 4. We could take now any other point or any other x value uh, for um, f of x. We could plug in, let's say, 10. And we would have m is equal to 4 times 10 minus 12 all over 10 minus 3. Well, 4 times 10, that's 40. And 40 minus 12, well, that's 28. And 10 minus 3 is 7. And 28 divided by 7 is 4 again. And the reason that we keep getting 4 no matter what is because the slope of f of x is 4 because it's a linear function. Okay, So here, I, I just want to show you, and this is the first video, I've got a couple more videos, and I'm going to show you what it is that I expect you to be able to do in understanding slope as a rational function.